Good day, everyone. My name is Maria Konjelska, and this is Poland Daily Culture. Today, we are going to talk about the most expensive Polish film production after City 44, the movie called The Legions. It is a first fiction film about Polish legions formed during World War I. We have in studio with us Maciej Pawlicki. Hello. Thank you for coming. My pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. But it is hard to talk about the film without watching it. So let's see a trailer. You worked with many horses and you needed to store them somewhere <laughs> as kind of, after all, you're responsible for them since they are your actors and qualified actors. Uh, how did you do it? Did you? Well, we, we built like a, a huge camp, huge stable, horse stable camp, and there were for 70 horses for, for uh, like two weeks. Uh, first they were trained, they were used to, to run uh, on that field, and then I would say very good conditions. Uh, but it was also a, a big, big effort, a production effort, and that was a standard for us to, to when we, for instance, when we were shooting in Cheshire, uh, which was uh, pretending to be a, a, a different town, but we, we shoot it in Cheshire. So you have to bring back historical realities as well. As I understand, is a huge amount of work with the costumes, but with also, also with decorations. How did you work on that? Well, we had to change uh, some. Uh, of course, we were choosing good locations, like like Tokarnia, where we have all these um, uh, old uh, mansions and huts, and and we um, uh, found some very picturesque places in Poland. But anyway, they had to be uh, adapted. And for instance, in Cheshire, we were shooting a town scene in um, in downtown Cheshire. So we had to change all the displays. Uh, and all the signs, all the names of the, of the stores all around the market into Russian uh, and into the old, uh, the old uh, style. So people really were really uh, very surprised because Czechian was never Russian. <laughs> and That's just, true. Why Russian <laughs> names around? But they said because all these uh, uh, gardens, uh, beer gardens were removed for the time being from the market. And they said, it's so beautiful now. Let's remain, <laughs> remain uh, it, leave it that way. In the uh, old style with Russian style, names. Well, maybe not Russian names, but the style. The style was really that people liked uh, a lot. And uh, the, the, I think the actors had that feeling that we are, that was Bartek Gellner was, was saying the other day that uh, we, it, he, he was in the production, that he had a feeling that that was really taking care of reality, of good uh, production quality. Uh, in every aspect, in, in, in costumes, in, in the, uh, on the set, uh, and even uh, everything that, they, that, that was uh, visible. So um, I think uh, people will, uh, I hope, will feel that atmosphere as well. I'm, I'm actually personally interested in uh, when, you, when you shoot battles in summer and winter, then the uniforms have to be different. Of course. And how were made those uniforms in those times, in, during the winter, so they wouldn't freeze to death, those soldiers? And were they wearing coats, how it looked like? And did your actors have problems also with weather circumstances? Well, the, well these, these coats were, were very uh, warm ones, because it was a real uh, wool. Uh, and um, uh, sometimes they were complaining wearing them in the summer, because it was really... Uh, hot. Uh, hot for them to, 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 to wear them in uh, the temperature of 30 degrees. But uh, in the winter it was okay because uh, all these uniforms uh, were, uh, had so many, I would say, um, uh, uh, th they were designed the way to make it for the soldiers to, f to, to feel safer, to, feel, uh, to be uh, protected from from uh, not, not only temperature, but also uh, effects of, of, of uh, 
water or of rain or snow uh, of, of, of uh, freezing. So uh, our actors had uh, that experience that uh, as these costumes, 100 years old, sometimes uh, were better responding to the weather uh, realities and war realities than, than their own uh, uniforms now. So there is a message that uh, real quality textures are still worth having Absolutely. and it's better to buy a real wool than an uh, artificial one. You had all those details and history details and uh, how did you restore um, the uniforms in the case that and what kind of uniforms Polish legions were because it's a good question they were fighting on the Austrian side but did they have Polish uniforms well it was it was changing because in the beginning uh, some of them were coming from the uh, were part of the Austrian army so for instance the, the, the material was was taken given by uh, by some regulations of, of the Austrian army but some were uh, were preparing uh, uniforms for themselves and that's why the colors are a bit different because there was a, was a big dif discussion what the so colors soldiers should be. were preparing uniforms yes, for yes. themselves yes we have stories for instance a, a, a very talented musician who got the uh, money from his father to to uh, buy himself a tuxedo and he did get the tuxedo but then he sold it and this money he invested in the uniform is selling his his uh, so those people were actually putting themselves in a danger to die on yes. the battlefield and they were paying for them exactly. themselves for exactly. the uniform absolutely so absolutely it's it's a huge huge sacrifice which we, it I was don't... not a sacrifice it was for them it was like they they were very uh, the most important goal to to live in the independent poland because they thought uh, uh, gir the girls as well they thought that uh, they can fulfill their dreams their they, their ambitions in the independent poland not in russia not in austria but in poland they were hoping that poland will be organized that way that for them uh, it will be really uh, uh, perfect their own uh, state, their own country. So that's why they were praying for the war. They were praying to, to have a chance to fight for Poland, which is difficult to understand for us now. But uh, maybe uh, if they wouldn't do that, we wouldn't be speaking um, we would, Polish we English. Have to not English yeah. Polish and English, we would be speaking Russian probably or German right now. That might be possible. Um, so we forget how what a huge struggle it was for Polish legions and for Poles those times to fight for this independence, and its Polish legions are not only associated with with fantasy and with great honor, but with a struggle of an everyday circumstances such as uniforms as well. Blood, sweat, and tears. Blood, sweat. So Polish legions are not only fantasy, but it's also blood, sweat, and tears. And I hope the viewers, while watching the film Polish Legions, will also remember about it. And this film will bring those realities and the memory of those people fighting for Polish independence.